Nothing makes me happier than growing food and nurturing my plants and then sharing that. This is the eco bubble. The whole idea for the property was to not only grow our own food for ourselves, but to also hopefully produce enough that we can share that with a local community. We are following permaculture methodology, and so we're not using any herbicides, pesticides. We're trying to attract pollinators and make it a safe space for basically any living creature on the little half acre. And then having the geodesic dome gave us the ability to actually produce food year round. So that's what we've been experimenting with now for I guess the last year and a half and it's definitely there's a learning curve with it but um, we were able to sell bags of mixed greens and, and lettuce this past winter which was awesome and also learning about canning and dehydrating and trying to figure out all the ways that we can use all the food to get us through the year. For us, it wasn't just about growing food and being self-sufficient. Winter here is truly a long, drawn-out experience. The idea was to create this bubble of paradise where you can go out in January and you, the second you walk in there, you feel much better. Well, you know, in Toronto for so many years, we, we had basically keyboard jobs. Deborah managed a large veterinary clinic and I managed an IT team. So we just wanted to get away from those keyboards and we were able to sort of indulge in something completely different. We've both just always bonded on growing food in our yard and mm -hmm. so it just made all the sense in the world and the cost of property out here was obviously better than the cost of property in Toronto. <laughs>of years now and it was just a blank slate like it was basically one big square 150 feet by 150 feet exactly half an acre of lawn at first we were just sort of mowing the lawn on this John Deere thing you know a four-wheeler <laughs> never been on one before and then little by little we started adding gardens and turning that lawn into basically Deb's vision Gabe's mother used to farm close to an acre. Uh, we inherited her entire seed collection. Um, mm. So we came here and literally had tens of thousands of seeds and it's fun because it's all in Italian, a little old lady writing. I love the concept of permaculture. I love the idea of trying to work with nature versus controlling nature and I'm also a lazy gardener, so the idea of no-till and chop and drop and naturalizing and not having to like weed everything within an inch of its life every season is uh, really appealing. Right now we're basically in late spring, early summer, so the gardens at this point, it's that stage where I think, oh my gosh, nothing is gonna grow. But four weeks from now, it will be a jungle out there. I had actually done about a year's worth of research in regards to what type of gardens I wanted to grow vegetables in. Uh, I'm conscious of the fact that we're getting older. I wanted something that was a little higher up and I came across Hugo Culture and I just thought it was brilliant because it means that I can use everything on the property, uh, prunings, you know, weeds as long as they're not seeded and old dead wood and layers of straw and basically everything that I chop down goes right back into the hugels and just love the fact that there's hardly any water that needs to go into them so there's water conservation there. Gabe has actually been doing the lawnscaping. Uh, so there are actual areas on the property that we don't mow. And so like circles and, and those will someday be more gardens. And so we're just gonna slowly take it over one inch or one foot at a time. 
Uh, we built an orchard area at the back. Uh, it's years away from probably producing actual fruit, but we have pawpaws, American hazelnuts, wild plum. There's the existing pear tree back there. On this side of the house, we actually have uh, what we call Butterfly Alley, and that is specifically native plantings uh, that are to attract specific types of pollinators. A um, big one for us is monarch and swallowtail butterflies. Here we are in southwestern Ontario. Year-round growing means dealing with minus 20 Celsius in January and plus even 40 last week in June. And the dome sort of provides a way to stabilize stuff. I came across Arctic Acres. Uh, they had literally just started up. We were one of their first earliest domes. The dome comes in a kind of kit and it was a lot of fun building it. The frame of it is cedar, which is nice because it's oily and withstands humidity. That's covered in polycarbonate panels, triple glazed. So you have a higher R value, but you lose light value. It has the pond in the back. It's about 11 feet across and four feet wide. So that is basically your heat sink. They actually recommend that about 70% of your surface is covered in plants. That actually helps in regards to maintaining that temperature. And it's, it is an ecosystem. So basically the fish eat food, they poop, and uh, that actually helps to fertilize the plants that are in the pond and the plants help keep the water clean. And so basically the light comes into the dome, hits that reflectix, the light bounces into your pond and that's what kind of heats that up and creates warm air and that gets sucked through the O-tubes under the soil beds all the way through um, to keep it warmer in the winter. So it's, it's to help you regulate your temperatures. It does its best, <laughs> but we do have to use some hydro to supplement, um, mm -hmm. you know, again, this sort of controlled environment. So we try to maintain about 10 degrees Celsius as our lowest temperature. There's definitely winter season challenges because plants, for the most part, need 10 hours of sunlight per day to grow. We bought like eight grow lights and then we got our first hydro bill. And so that was the end of the grow lights. And so then it became, okay, well, what grows in these conditions? For the most part, it really is gonna be kale, mustard greens, mixed greens, lettuces. Uh, you can do kohlrabi did great, broccoli, cauliflower, all those kind of things do wonderful in the winters. Obviously it's only been a year and a half, so there's been a lot of experimenting. Could I be producing more food? Probably, and I think we'll get there. Last year, I overdid it with tomato plants. We gave away over 7,000 tomatoes, because I just honestly, all I could do was harvest. I had no time to sell them, market them, or I just take the tomatoes. Um, we, we don't have to buy lettuce. We don't have to buy any type of green at all anymore. This year will be our first potato harvest. So hopefully should be enough to get us through to the end of the year, I think. And I pickled beets last year, dehydrated things. And even beyond the, the sort of fruit and vegetable harvest, there's like there's garlic scapes or zucchini flowers, which are such a treat, or certain greens that you never thought you could eat, like radish green. Uh, there are definitely some things that we still have to buy on a regular basis, like carrots. They can be a really difficult thing to grow in the garden. And some things you think you're going to have tons of it, and then a pest comes through and wipes everything out in a matter of like a week or two. Mm -hmm. We have a farm gate stand and wasn't really sure how it was going to go, but I used social media to basically put the word out that any of my surplus would be in the stand uh, as often as possible. And I was a little bit embarrassed at first because, you know, some days literally you're like, oh great, I've got like six radishes and, you know, some lettuce. but. It was actually really amazing how people responded on social media. I used um, 
obviously a hashtag for the eco bubble, but I also did a hashtag of let's feed each other. So this year I'm going with suggested pricing. So I'm really setting it up as pay what you can or veggie exchange. Um, and again, we want to deal with food insecurity in the area. I think times have been really tough over the last two years for a lot of people. We, we wanted a place where we could grow food 365 days a year. You have to build something though to do that. You need some kind of infrastructure. So the cost layout, you know, it's kind of high, I guess. So it's not like um, everyone can just run out and buy a greenhouse for their backyard and enjoy it in the winter time. There is work and investment. I think for me, it's like a hobby. It keeps you busy and challenged and learning. It's amazing to, to walk out into your gardens. To be able to do that in January, February is even more special. So to be able to have fresh salad or fresh tomatoes uh, in the middle of winter or very, very early spring, nothing compares. Subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and check out our playlists for more stories like this. You can also follow Deborah and Gabe on Facebook and on their website at The Eco Bubble. Thanks for watching.